organophosphate poisoning is the topic for this video and the most important thing to do initially is to explain some of the key players and the abbreviations that I'll be using. Acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter involved and ACH is the uh, uh, abbreviation. Acetylcholine esterase is an enzyme that breaks down acetylcholine and that's abbreviated ACHE. Acetylcholine esterase is also sometimes referred to as cholinesterase so just keep that in mind. And then we have acetylcholine esterase inhibitors and those are abbreviated ACHEI. Now acetylcholine esterase inhibitors are uh, molecules that inhibit this enzyme. And then just in case uh, this isn't enough for you there's a few more. It's not so bad. There's acetylcholine receptors as well. And those receptors are abbreviated ACHR. And there's two types. There's nicotinic and muscarinic. So I'll keep the abbreviations and I'll draw a diagram to illustrate how this works. So let's say you have your presynapse, your postsynapse, and then in between, of course, you have a synapse. And let's draw all the players. So first we have the acetylcholine that's released from the presynaptic terminal. And we'll draw little circles to represent the acetylcholine molecules. Then on the postsynaptic terminal, of course, you're going to need receptors that sort of catch those molecules. And those receptors are ACHR. And there's quite a few of them. I'll just draw a couple. And remember, there's two types of receptors. There's nicotinic and muscarinic. And then in the synapse, you'll have, of course, a molecule, or enzyme, rather. And I'll draw it like that. Acetylcholine esterase. And now this is responsible for breaking down acetylcholine. And then the final player in our diagram is actually the bad guy and that is acetylcholine esterase inhibitors. This is really the main player in our video because the acetylcholine esterase inhibitor is what inhibits acetylcholine esterase and when that happens the levels of acetylcholine rise in the synapse. So just think about it. Acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter this enzyme normally breaks it down. If the enzyme is working properly, acetylcholine levels are sort of normal. But if the enzyme is not working because this is deactivating it, then acetylcholine levels will rise in the synapse. And that will overstimulate the receptors, and that's what will cause all the symptoms. Now, this is what organophosphates are. So we talked about in the beginning that the topic was organophosphate poisoning. Well, they're acetylcholine esterase inhibitors. They inhibit this enzyme, acetylcholine esterase. And where do you find them? Commonly in insecticides, sprays that they use to kill bugs. So commonly in a clinical vignette, you'll have a scenario where somebody is in contact with some can of some spray, or maybe they live on a farm and they were exposed to some insecticide. So pathophysiology, the organophosphates, which are commonly used as insecticides, are absorbed by our body if we're exposed to them in the GI tract and also in our lungs. And they inhibit the acetylcholine esterase enzyme. And what that does is it prevents the breakdown 
of acetylcholine. And when that happens, acetylcholine levels rise in the synapse. And when you have a lot of acetylcholine um, activating those receptors, that's where you get all the symptomatology. So let's talk about the symptomatology, and I'll break it up into two categories. The first is when you have overstimulation of the muscarinic receptors, because remember there's two types, and the other one is overstimulation of the nicotinic receptors. So that's the other type of acetylcholine receptor. So acetylcholine receptor N and acetylcholine receptor M. So, the first one, fortunately, there's a mnemonic that uh, describes some of the symptoms. You've got D for diarrhea. You've got A for urination. And M is for meiosis, which is constriction of the pupil. Uh, B is for bronchospasm. Uh, e is for emesis, or vomiting. L is for lacrimation or excess tearing and the S is for salivation and there's a few others I wanted to mention like uh, bronchorrhea, excess sputum, low blood pressure, hypotension, bradycardia which is uh, of course a low heart rate and uh, there's one more I just wanted to mention which is vomiting. So this is uh, symptomatology of overstimulation of the muscarinic acetylcholine receptors. Now let's talk about the nicotinic receptors. Symptoms include tachycardia, mydriasis, which is pupil dilation, hypertension, high blood pressure, sweating, paralysis, and two very important muscle symptoms muscle weakness and muscle fasciculations that's also very important now what's important about this that I really wanted to emphasize is that the treatment is different if you have a patient that has these types of symptoms you treat with atropine and I'll talk a little bit about this later if you have a patient with these types of symptoms you treat with a drug called pralidoxime. So if you have neuromuscular toxicity, which is this uh, scenario, then you will treat with pralidoxime. But if you have more of a um, muscarinic uh, receptor overload, then you treat with atropine. So that's the important thing about differentiating the symptomatology. Diagnosis, you can measure levels of the acetylcholine esterase um, in your body and in organophosphate poisoning the acetylcholine esterase activity will drop significantly to perhaps even 40 percent of normal because the acetylcholine esterase inhibitor namely the organophosphate is preventing uh, the proper uh, uh, functioning of this acetylcholinesterase en enzyme. The organophosphate essentially inhibits this. Treatment. Well, I touched about it, but I just wanted to hit that point home. Respiratory manifestations with uh, organophosphate poisoning are treated with atropine. So remember those symptoms that happen when there's overstimulation of the muscarinic receptors. In contrast, if you have neuromuscular manifestations, then that is treated with pradiloxime. Pradiloxime um, is also known as 2PAM. There's another name for it, gener brand name. Pradiloxime um, can also be referred to as 2PAM. So let's take a look at a few clinical vignettes, see what this looks like. 10 year old boy is brought to the emergency department by his parents 
after he has sprayed himself with playing with an unmarked spray can. After several minutes, he began tearing and drooling, according to his mother. By the time his father arrived, the boy had collapsed on the floor and was unresponsive. On exam, the boy appears comatose and profusely diaphoretic. Heart rate's 48, blood pressure's 80. Patient's respirations are slow and shallow, and the expiratory time is prolonged. Pupils are constricted. Lung auscultation reveals bilateral wheezes. Multiple fasciculations are observed in various muscle groups. Pulse ox measures an oxygen saturation of 70% on room air. Chest x-ray demonstrates clear lungs. The child is immediately intubated and ventilated on 100% supplemental oxygen. IV saline is started. Most appropriate next step is... Well, he's definitely got a lot of respiratory manifestations. And he's got lacrimation. He's got uh, salivation. And he's also got bradycardia, hypotension, and meiosis. So these are all signs of basically a patient who has a lot of uh, muscarinic uh, receptor overstimulation and that is treated with atropine so choice A. Next question parents present to the emergency department carrying their four-year-old child who is lethargic and has excessive oral secretions meiosis tearing and soiled trousers from urination and defecation remnants of emesis are seen on his clothing tremors fasciculations and hypertension are also present the parents tell the physician that the child had been in his usual state of good health until this afternoon. The patient's symptoms developed while playing in the field recently sprayed with insecticides. The physician suspects organophosphate poisoning. To treat the nicotinic effects, the patient should use which of the following? Well, it's really nice that they even say nicotinic. Um, that makes it much easier because you know that if you're treating nicotinic symptoms, you will go with praladoxine, which is choice C, also known as 2PAM. And finally, six-year-old boy is brought in by his parents over the past three to four hours. He has been complaining of headache, blurry vision, and nausea. In addition, he has abdominal cramps and diarrhea. The family lives on a farm, and the child has spent the last day helping out with crop spraying. The father also reports that the boy has been salivating and sweating quite a bit. Physical exam reveals a lethargic boy with the following findings. Vital signs, the temperature is 37, blood pressure is 90, heart rate is 130, respiratory rate is 36, pupils are meiotic, uh, abdomen shows hyperactive bowel so sounds, skin is moist and flushed, neurologic exam shows fasciculations of muscles in the legs with associated weakness. And the next appropriate step is, well, there's, got, there's a mix of symptoms here, both, uh, uh, he's got a mix of muscarinic and nicotinic symptoms. For example, he's got the nicotinic overstimulation, which is the muscle fasciculations, but he's also got uh, some muscarinic, uh, for example, he's got hypotension. So the answer, if I had to choose, would be both praladoxime to treat the neuromuscular toxicity, for example, the muscle fasciculations, and atropine to treat the um, overstimulation of the muscarinic receptors that he has. Uh, for example, he has uh, uh, myotic pupils and he's got hypotension, things like that. So the best answer would be a combination of both of these and looks like B is represented in the answer choices.